you, thank you, thank you. XC2RH, XC2RH, this is WB6KPN, Willie Baker, 6 Kings, Peter, Nancy, XC2RH, XC2RH, this is WB6KPN, the handle is Matt, WB6KPN calling XC2RH and standing by. Uh, WB6KPN, I'm Matt Futterman, WB6KPN. Uh, my name is Enrique. Enrique, well, the same as Henry. Everyone you've seen so far okay, is a friend fine, of mine. Well, I haven't met them in person, but we all have something in common. Ham radio. Uh, uh, what's Uh, 10, 15, uh, 20 and 20. Enrique has his amateur license from the Mexican government. I have a license from the U.S. government. In this country, the Federal Communications Commission regulates the hobby. I got started when I was 13. It's really great fun, and one of the reasons is that with a half million hams around the world, you never know who's listening in, waiting to join the conversation. Many of them by tuning around on their mobile rigs. Oh, I think I've located that. Would-be hams listen in, too, but they can't transmit until they get a license. When you first get on the air, all your conversations, all your contacts, or QSOs, are carried on by Morse code, and a lot of beginners build up their code speed by listening in on these CW conversations. I'm wondering if uh, possibly you'll uh, be on at dinner time. Uh, go ahead. Well, also, myself, I have to go to work right now. I'm also in a hurry. And I'll try to be after uh, 6.30 or 7 o'clock after my work. I'll see if I can make a contact with you. So, 73s, y hasta mañana. WB6KPN, XC2RH. 73, and we'll see you later. XC2RH, this is WB6KPN. Normally, my QSOs are longer, but I wanted to get to my club's field day practice meeting on time. We schedule these in order to test all our portable equipment to make sure it's ready in case of an emergency. It's also a good way to improve your operating skills under less than ideal conditions. And besides, it's a lot of fun. Many of us build our own equipment, which gives you a good practical knowledge of how it works, or in some cases, why it doesn't. The FCC requirements are set up so that it's easy to get on the air with a beginner's or novice license like Ed here, WN6QDQ. And there's nothing like being on the air to build up your code speed. Ed really works at it, and the way he's going, he'll be able to pass his general class test any time now. Quite a few of us in this club already have the highest class license, the Amateur Extra, which gives us full operating privileges on any of the dozen or so ham bands. Our antenna for the 15-meter band is a homemade cubicle quad. Okay, there is quite a bit of interference on your signal. You're about Q4 and S7 here. Q4 and S7, the location is Woodland Hills, about 25 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles on the west end of the San Fernando Valley. My name is Matt, Mexico Alpha Tango Tango, Matt. We're operating sort of a field day type setup here, portable setup with the West Valley Amateur Radio Club. We have about four stations set up. We're using a Swan 350 to uh, a 15 meter portable quad up about uh, 20 feet, two element quad. Saudi copy, K8ZLS in Livonia, Michigan. This is WA6LXN Portable 6. CPT to CPT Mobile. During a real emergency, the hours of preparation pay off, and amateur organizations like RACES, Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, really do a job. CPT, clear. All right, Zeder, get your units. I'll set up the evacuation command post. Right. Bill, send Baker easy 6-6. Six, six. The 
bigger the emergency, the more important amateur radio becomes. A few years ago, a tremendous earthquake up in Alaska sent a tidal wave crashing into the coast near Anchorage, among other things, wiping out just about every normal means of communication. You may have seen some of the TV reports. The most awesome force to hit North America in the 20th century. Hitting Anchorage at 5.36 p.m. just after the close of business. At 5.47, the first mobile units of the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service swing into action, ready to provide immediate communications. This is downtown Anchorage. The airport control tower. The story is repeated in Seward and Kodiak. All over Alaska, ham radio volunteers provide vital links in rescue communications. Portable equipment is gathered into makeshift message centers to find the missing and speed help to where it's needed in the aftermath of the worst disaster in Alaskan history. This is Bill Leonard reporting. Hey, Charlene, what are you doing this summer? Well, Dave, I haven't been doing very much. I've been doing a little volunteer work at the Braille Institute. But aside from that, I've been looking around for a job that pays a little bit. What have you been doing? Yeah, I guess, uh, Charlene, it's really the paying job that counts. And, uh, well, I've got a nine to five work day here. I want to get as much as I can in this summer. So I'll uh, have enough throughout the school year there. Go ahead. Break. Who's the breaker? A lot of young hams helped out during the Alaskan earthquake, as they do during every emergency. But most of the time, we just enjoy hamming, getting together on the air. Keeping up with old friends and meeting new ones, talking about your new rig, the latest DX station you talk to halfway around the world, dates, jobs, whatever comes to mind. X Z. We're located in central Los Angeles, and the handle is Gene. Great, easy, and Nancy energized. Wondering if uh, one of you could give me a signal report, please. Over. Yeah, hi, Gene. My call is WB6 FFE. And my name's Charlene, and I'm here in Hollywood, not far from here. Some of the conversations get pretty casual, but we do keep a written log of every contact. It's one of the FCC requirements, and it's also a valuable diary of all your ham activities. And, uh, how do you copy me down there, Gene? Go ahead. Uh, no S meter on the receiver, the S20R, but uh, you must be uh, pretty strong because you're uh, giving in a good, good rumble here. Go ahead. Break. Who's the breaker? This is WA6RIZ. Uh, the name here is Roy. Okay, Charlene, uh, I heard you in there, and I uh, was just wondering if you are down at that West Car picnic last weekend. I was down there with Steve, WA6NQK, and I think I saw you out there pulling the names out of the hat for the drawing they had there. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, Roy, that was me. I was down there with John and Dave. Uh, they're also in here. Uh, hi, John. I Rag chewing is great fun, but hams have lots of different ways of enjoying the hobby. Some of them are pretty wild. Hams don't build rockets, at least not this big, but they did build this satellite, OSCAR, short for Orbiting Satellite Carrying Amateur Radio, mainly to see if they could do it. Hams all over the world got the message. W6ORG, this is WA6EPX, audio and video. Okay, uh, that should be coming in on you there. I'll uh, try and zoom in on this thing. And here's another way to do your thing, ham TV. Actually, it's not as unusual as you might think. There are several hundred ATV operators in this country. It's only natural. Amateurs were pioneers in the development of television, as they have been in many other areas. A couple of good high-power transistors, and uh, I think it'll put out a good picture in the uh, sheriff's helicopter for us there in New Year's. So that, I got to get back to it, Rudy. I got to swing some more solder on this thing. And uh, nice seeing you again on there, Rudy. And we'll check with you later. WA6EPX, W6ORG. W6ORG, this is WA6EPX. Tom didn't go out and buy all this gear either. He scrounged around for the parts, a lot of them surplus, and put everything together himself. There's a special kick you get from home brewing your own equipment and seeing it work. What is the maximum input power permitted to the final stage of the transmitter in a station licensed to the holder of a novice class license or operated by such an operator? 75 watts. Okay. For how long is an amateur novice class license valid? Besides learning the Morse code, five words a minute, you'll have to know some basic radio theory and a few operating rules to get ready for the novice test. With a little help, you can learn it all. At the same time, you're building your transmitter. 
Everything you need is in the license manual and other publications put out by the American Radio Relay League. Be controlled by crystals. Once you get your license, you're on your way. And for no more than the cost of a couple record albums, you can build a transmitter like this. One tube, made from a junk TV set and a few other parts. Total investment, about $10, including the key for sending code. Here's the receiver, about 20 years old, still working fine. Bought used from a ham radio store for about $30. Patty's talking to WA6MEM, a station she's worked before. There's his QSL card. Hams everywhere exchange these personalized cards and keep them as a reminder and a record of contacts. Some veteran hams have literally thousands of these from stations throughout the world. It's very possible Patty built up her code speed by tuning in W1AW, the American Radio Relay League's own station in Newington, Connecticut, world headquarters for the hams' official organization. Another way to sharpen up your code speed and learn your theory is to get into a novice license class like this one. Schools and ham clubs run these regularly. John's using an electronic keyer. It makes perfect dots and dashes. But it's a funny thing. Trying to send three words a minute is quite a trick when you're used to being up around 30. It takes skill and a lot of practice to get that good at Morse code. You can see why hams take such pride in having CW as sort of a second language. Uh, when the current goes once one way, then turns around, comes back the other way, and starts to go uh, again the first direction, the original direction, then we call that one cycle. John is typical of young hams everywhere, willing and anxious to give us time to help beginners get started. If you want to find out what being a ham radio operator is all about, there's plenty of help available. All you really need is to want to become one. Stick with it, and almost anyone can pass the novice test after just a month or two. Call the frequency. Almost anyone. Per second. Ham radio has a lot going for it. It's fun, rewarding, and challenging. It doesn't have to cost a lot, and you really feel you're doing something. It's a terrific hobby. I recommend it. So 73, and I'll see you on the air. Okay, is this frequency in use? XE2RH. XE2RH, this is WB6KPN. Yeah, go ahead, I'll turn on the uh, tall type equipment and uh, see how you, uh, how you come through there.